Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks, to The Hungry Gamers, back with another mini-review. And today we are talking about Sleep Tight from Moon Girl Games. Now, very quickly, Sleep Tight is a one-to-four-player game in which you are taking on the role of children that have fallen asleep and the Sandman has pulled them into its... Well, it's nightmares as creating an, an attempt to steal the souls of the children. And in order to win, you're going to be playing cards that will either damage the Sandman, steal soul fragments from the other players around the table, or perhaps protect you from the attack of the Sandman. Or if you really want to, use it to team up with the Sandman and try to stop the other players from winning. If nobody wins, then you win. And there's a couple of ways to win, as you can tell. There is the team up with the Sandman and then kill everybody else by stealing their souls. Very, very happy, family friendly. Or you can, as a team, simply defeat the Sandman, or you can gain enough soul fragments in order to be able to play the card that allows you to wake up. And if you're the one that wakes up, then you win by yourself. On any given turn, you're going to play as many cards out of your hand as you want, face down on the table, and you're only able to do that if you have the right amount of soul fragments. Now, soul fragments aren't Bent, but you have to have however many are on the card in order to actually play the card. And keep in mind, each turn you're only going to draw one card, so the more you play on this turn will mean that you will have less to play next turn. Then the Sandman will play its card, and it might nullify some of your things, it might cause you to take extra damage, whatever it might be, and then you will rinse and repeat and go on through the game. And it's also important to note that, as I said, that sometimes you're going to play cards that are going to redirect all the damage you take to one of your co-players, or maybe you're going to damage them or steal something from them, and so on and so on and so on. In the solo mode, you're simply going to be playing against a bot that will have four cards out, and you're going to wind up randomly picking one, two, or three, or four of those cards to play, and you kind of have an opponent that you're playing against, as well as, obviously, you're always playing against the game. Now, that's pretty much the core of it. So what do I like about this game? First off, I like the art. It has a very kind of Nightmare Before Christmas, Tim Burton kind of vibe to it, which I really, really do enjoy. I think the game plays very quickly. I love that it's a tiny little box, easy to take anywhere. The solo is very easy to set up and play. All of that I really like. I also like how there are several ways to win the game and how you have options to kind of change how you're playing mid-game. Because when you get the card that gives you the option to become a traitor, well, that changes the way you're going to play the game completely. You can also kind of set up say, no, okay, with this game, we are only going to try to beat the Sandman, or this game, and we're just going to play kind of everyone for themselves, first person to wake up, or you know, whatever it may be. But there's so many different options that are out there, and I do really, really appreciate that. The game is quick, the game is easy, it has some nice, simple push-your-luck elements as you're putting out perhaps more than one card or two cards, maybe all of your cards, to try to have one big turn, but of course it can be easily nullified. There's this reading the other people around the table. There's a little bit of take that going on. And all of that I do enjoy. So what are my quibbles with the game? Well, the first one is it can be very mean. This is one of those games that it can just be mean, and it has that potential to become a traitor mid-game. And that might not be for everybody. It's also got a little bit of an identity crisis going on. And even though I just praised it, that there's so many different ways to play, that might not be something for you. You might not like the fact that you can win all together. You can win just by yourself. You can win by killing everybody else. And every game, unless you make a gentleman's or gentle person's agreement, I should say, or take cards out, you never know what the game is going to be. And it's going to change all the way around all the time. And that might not be for you. That might bother you that the game state is changing mid-game. And the, my only other quibble with the game is that I didn't find the solo very satisfying. And the reason I wasn't very satisfied by it is because, yes, you have a bot that you're playing against, but it, I didn't feel like I was really playing against it. I felt like I was playing against the Sandman and then there was this other deck that was sometimes doing things that might affect me, and sometimes it did nothing. And it works, and it allows you to play the game solo, but I just, I feel like it needs to be developed a little bit more. But there you have it, folks. That is Sleep Tight. I think this is a clever little game. It's not very expensive. It doesn't take up a lot of space on your shelf. And the art is wonderful. It's a unique theme. And I think it's something that, if you're okay with that 
fluctuating game state and the fluctuating wind conditions, this is one that you just might really enjoy if you're okay with that. So there you have it, folks. That is Sleep Tight. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.